Hello and welcome to the Starting Sisters series, where we go from first purchase to first 2000 point army list and everything in between. In this video, we'll take a look at the HQ choices for the Sisters of Battle, which include everything from generic options to a slew of special characters, with almost all of the options being rather powerful and only a couple being sidelined for the most part. More so, the various options within the HQ choice can augment how your army plays, as each HQ is different in the benefits it offers, and as such, the following list of choices is in no real order outside of most commonly played to least commonly played so let's get into it coming in first is the canonist which you'll see in almost every list and in many cases you'll see more than one of her running around the reason being that she's a rather powerful model coming in at only 50 points for her basic loadout and she has all kinds of options in terms of items abilities and builds her baseline stats are incredible at 2 plus on both weapon skill and ballistic skill and coming in at a 3 plus armor save as well as a 4 plus invulnerable save thanks to her Rosarius. and on top of that she comes with a basic loadout of a bolt pistol and chain sword as well as crack grenades and frag grenades you can upgrade both her pistol and sword to all kinds of different weapons based on how you'd like to run her though generally you'll stay with the basic build as you don't really want her to go up in points too much in addition to all of this, she has a great ability that's called Lead the Righteous, which allows you to reroll hit rolls of 1 on all friendly order models within 6 inches of her. This is a very good ability, especially considering the low amount of points you pay for it. But remember, it does have the order keyword, so if you have multiple detachments with different orders or simply units without an order, they don't benefit from it unless they are of the same order. Depending on the weapons you've given to her, you have even more options for special items, such as the Rod of Office if you you've taken a power sword which extends her lead the righteous aura by three inches or if you've kept the chain sword for 10 more points you can pick up a brazier of holy fire which is a one-time use mortal wound generator or a null rod which makes her immune to psychic powers as well as reducing psychic checks by one of enemy psychers within 18 inches of her none of these are a must-have but can all be rather okay and if you have extra points when building a list give them a go and see if one really shines for you Finally, in terms of a basic canonist, she also offers a great platform for warlord traits, as well as heroin in the making, which gives you an additional trait that can't be carried by any of the named characters. Usually you'll take a beacon of the faith as that is the best warlord trait as a whole, but if you already have it on one of your other characters, there are various other traits that aren't bad as well for that extra trait off of heroin in the making. If this list of stuff she can do hasn't convinced you about how versatile she already is, she even has a special pseudo character build that isn't named officially but you'll probably hear it from various sister players. This build is known simply as the Becky, which takes a Candace from the Order of the Bloody Rose, gives her the Relic Sword Beneficence, and oftentimes the Warlord trait Righteous Rage. That lets her reroll any dice when making a charge roll, and if she successfully made a charge or performed a heroic intervention, she can reroll the wound rolls in melee. This makes a rather basic looking model into an absolute blender in melee combat that puts out up to 8 attacks with rather solid armor penetration and a very good damage profile. Though she doesn't have the best strength or toughness, but even then, the Becky is a staple in many lists. So to wrap up the canonist, she's very points efficient with a ton of options and has an amazing collection of abilities as well as a very solid stat profile. You'll be very hard pressed to find a better generic HQ choice within the game as a whole. Following the Canis, there are three special characters that have rather beautiful models and all of them see a decent amount of play. However, out of the three, the most common is probably the Triumph of St. Catherine. And while this unit isn't that good at smaller games, such as 500 points, it becomes far stronger in larger sized games. This is mostly due to the Triumph being a support character that buffs other units while having a rather expensive points cost of 195 points baseline, or almost four canonesses. The Triumph is a single model composed of several smaller models and has a decent stat line but can't board transports and the toughness isn't much better than a regular sister battle. Unlike a regular sister, the Triumph has a 4 plus invulnerable save as well as an ability that gives enemies minus 1 to hit when attacking this unit. The Triumph has a decent amount of attacks that change with the number of wounds it has and while it has a rather powerful melee weapon in the Martyr Sword, you are limited to only 4 attacks with the Martyr Sword to symbolize only one model carrying that weapon. What really makes the Triumph an interesting model is that it carries a set of different relics with each relic being carried by a different member of the Triumph and the number of relics changes based on the wounds remaining. 
As wounds are lost or gained, you choose which relics remain or are returned, which is a rather unique and cool concept that I have not seen elsewhere as of yet. There are a total of five different relics, each representing a different order, and they have the following abilities. The first relic generates one miracle die at the start of each turn, and considering the best warlord trait only generates one die at the start of your turn, this is twice as good as it occurs on both your turn and your opponent's turn, and you'll probably want to keep this relic if you lose enough wounds to lose relics. The second relic is an ability that looks at the enemy units within 6 inches and generates d3 mortal wounds on a roll of 5 plus per unit within that 6 inch range. Though if the enemy is a psyker or a chaos unit, this generates a mortal wound on a 4 plus instead of a 5 plus. It's not terrible, but usually one you'll discard unless you're being swarmed in melee range. The third adds plus 1 to the hit roll of melee attacks for friendly models within 6 inches. Pretty good for screening units and works with mortifiers if you're using them as shooting units that hang back with a triumph. Otherwise, it's another relic that can be discarded as needed. The fourth relic lets you perform an act of faith for a unit within six inches of the triumph regardless if you've performed one in that phase and this is rather good as it synergizes with the first relic very well. Finally, the last relic states that when you do perform an act of faith, you can add or subtract one from the miracle die used if the unit is within six inches of the triumph and this ability does not stack with other similar abilities. As a whole, the triumph is a rather solid unit and is reasonably flexible with the relics it has. Though it's a rather slow moving model and has low toughness and as such it really needs to optimize the relic buffs to be worth the points. More so, while the Triumph does have most of the special abilities of Sisters, it does not actually belong to any order so it does not benefit from Convictions or other order specific abilities. After the Triumph, we'll look at a character that is the polar opposite of what the Triumph is, which is much more of an army of one as opposed to a support unit, this character being Celestine. Celestine is a quick moving model with a 12 inch move speed and has a great stat line similar to the Canonus with 2 plus for a ballistic skill and a weapon skill, as well as a 4 plus invulnerable save, and unfortunately she also has 3 toughness, but she does have a regular 2 plus armor save. On top of that, her special sword has a very strong profile with her 6 attacks that supercharges her strength and damage and the sword has a flamer profile when it's used as a shooting weapon. And even though she only has 3 toughness, she has way more resilience than can be seen at first glance, as she can be accompanied by Gemini Superior, which don't take up a slot if Celestine is in your army, and Celestine can both heal and resurrect the Gemini Superior at the start of the movement phase, while in return the Gemini Superior can tank damage for Celestine, and Celestine provides them with plus 2 to their Shield of Faith invulnerable save, as opposed to the normal plus 1 that she gives to all other units with the Shield of Faith ability, which brings the Gemini Superior invulnerable vulnerable save to 4 plus, so you'll definitely want to take at least one Gemini superior to go with Celestine. Though if your Gemini do happen to fail and Celestine falls in combat, the first time Celestine dies, you roll a d6 and on a 2 plus she pops back up with full power. This means that in most cases your opponent will have to destroy her twice to actually get rid of her, while also battling through the Gemini to begin damaging her in the first place. Though I really do wish this ability was a little more consistent because even though it occurs on a 2 plus, it's really upsetting when you roll a 1 for this model getting back up and losing it simply because of one bad die roll. Again, you'll usually pass this roll, but it just feels really bad when you don't happen to succeed in this roll. Going back to the Triumph, Celestine is similar in that neither the Triumph or she belong to any order, and Celestine costs 170 points baseline, not counting the Gemini, so she definitely is a heavy points investment, but her resilience and damage output make her well worth it if you want to play her. To wrap up the special characters, we come to Junith Yurida, who we've looked at in the past, and she's about as popular as Celestine in terms of play. In fact, as Junith isn't very points intensive at only 115 points, she'll oftentimes appear alongside Celestine, and both may show up in the same list as a Triumph, so there's really no limitation to how you can mix and match all of these different HQ choices. Junith has a lot of the similar characteristics we've seen already, such as a 2 plus weapon and ballistic skill, as well as a 4 plus invulnerable save and so on. But she does have some unique aspects in that she has 4 toughness instead of 3, and she can explode like a vehicle when she is slain, while also having a 10 inch movement speed, which is rather uncommon. Though really what you're taking her for is her special ability that lets you reroll rolls of 1 to hit and to wound for models within 6 inches of her that belong to the same order as she does, which has to be the Order of Our Martyred Lady. This is great for all kinds of retributors, whether it be long range weapons or Meltas or the Exorcist tanks, if they're of the same order, and as such, in many ways, Junith really does carry the order of our martyred lady. 
Additionally, like Celestine, she buffs the invulnerable save of any models with Shield of Faith by 1 to a maximum of 4+, plus. not just models of the same order as she is. As a whole, she's a unit that doesn't cost too many points and provides rather solid auras while having solid stats, but she does force you into a specific order, which isn't bad but can feel a little restrictive at times, something that the Triumph and Celestine doesn't suffer from. After all these fantastic HQ choices, we have the Missionary, which is similar to the Preacher who is an elite choice, and both of them exist to provide a plus one attack buff to friendly models within six inches of them. The difference being that the Missionary takes up an HQ slot, has a little bit more war gear that doesn't really matter, and costs 45 points instead of 35 points like the Preacher. Generally, you won't take him over the Preacher unless you're really hard up for those five points in the HQ slot that you save by not taking a Canonist, or you've already filled out your elite slot options and have an HQ slot slot that you can fill out to gain this buff without having to take an extra detachment or something of the sort. In other words, he's kind of a filler unit that will usually be replaced by the Preacher, but it's good to know he exists as he can sometimes be useful if the stars align in your list and you just happen to need his ability while not filling up an elite slot or you just really want to save 5 points while filling up an HQ choice. Again, he's just kind of there, he's not terrible, but it just so happens that there's another model within the same army that essentially does his job but a little better. And while I've said that the extra war gear he gets for the points, doesn't really matter. It can sometimes provide a little extra benefit, but considering he's usually going to be escorting Repentia or something of the sort, it's mostly not going to make a big difference. Though sometimes it will, and you'll be very happy that you had it. And finally, we come to the last HQ choice, which is a special character from the Blackstone Fortress game, known as Taddeus the Purifier. It's a neat model, but it's just a missionary with a special mace for 55 points as opposed to 45 points. If the missionary is already rather hard to fit into a list, this guy is almost impossible to play as he doesn't do anything special outside of having a special mace and costs more than a canonist which has a million different options for less points. Why would you really take him over a missionary because I get you might take him over a preacher because of an HQ slot versus an elite slot but the mace he carries doesn't really seem like you're getting enough. He is a rather nice model though so at least there's that but then again so are all of the sisters models and as we've covered the HQ choices this is the end of the video. If you've enjoyed the content please like and subscribe as it does help the channel out and as always thank you for watching. Watching. Have a great day. Bye.